Hey kids, it's Pastor Ronnie, and hey, I'm so excited to be with you today. Uh, I know we're not meeting up physically tonight, but I'm excited to at least be hanging out with you, at least digitally. Um, but let me ask real fast, what's one of your favorite things that you love that is in the world? It could be something in nature, it could be an animal, it could be whatever. And uh, while you think about it, let me show you what is one of my favorite things in nature here in Billings. Let's check it out. So as you probably can tell from the drive, I'm up here on the rims. I absolutely love the rims. Now, part of why I love the rims is the fact that I didn't grow up with it. Now, I grew up in Florida and to where there was tons and tons of beaches, which is super awesome, but we never had anything like the rims. And it is one of the coolest of creations that I know of and whether it happened really, really fast, or it took a long time to form, it's still regardlessly super awesome and that God created it all. And in fact, today we're gonna to be talking about how God is our creator. So everybody on the count of three, I want you to say God is my creator. So one, two, three, God is my creator. No, awesome, let's do it one more time. One, two, three, God is my creator, fantastic. Now. Before we go into a game, I just want to show you some of what I love about the rims. And so I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to show you just why I think it's super awesome to be here. So, especially during this time of year to where you get to see all the houses and you have all these trees that are changing their colors, and I especially love finding the trees that have the red leaves, because uh, since red is my favorite color, by the way. So, let me get back on down home, and we'll get started with the game. So see you then. All right, I'm back from the rims, and if you notice, I have this ball in my hand. If you look up closely, you'll see some different animals that are on the ball. And uh, and so, before we play our game, I want to ask, what is your favorite animal? Uh, tell me in one, two, three. Awesome, fantastic. One of my favorite animals are actually otters. I love otters, and for whatever reason, they're cute and cuddly, and they're super cool. And uh, and so, hey, with our game today, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to test your ability to see how good you can tell what type of animal sound is from another. And so we're gonna play this game called Name That Sound, Animal Edition. And so follow the rules on the screen and we'll have some fun. And I will see you after that for worship. Ha <laughs> ha 
clouds, black and white, turns to color all around. All this new in the Savior I have found. See the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turns to color all around. All this new in the Savior I have found. Oh, this is living.
Hey, isn't it incredible to know that God is the awesome creator of everything? And so when we worship him with song, we get a chance to tell him how great of a creator he is. And he deserves every bit of that. And so thanks for joining us with worship today. Now, we're going to get into the big God story. And it's going to be really awesome as we're going to go way back to the very, 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 very beginning. Um, but before we do that, let's check in and see what Dash and Austin have for us today. Hey everybody, we're your hosts, Dash and Austin. And this is Challenge Accepted. All right, Austin, what's our challenge for this week? Let's see. This week, we are supposed to combine three of our favorite foods to make the ultimate new super meal. Okay, wait. So we can combine any foods? Yep, anything we want. Okay, so let's say I wanted to combine vanilla ice cream with sprinkles and chocolate syrup. That's not a new food. See, the idea is to create something entirely new. Got it. Create the ultimate super food. Challenge, Challenge accepted. accepted. All right, Dash. What you got? Well, you see, my favorite food is pizza, but I also love mac and cheese and ice cream. Well, I feel like everyone's favorite food is pizza, but what are you gonna do with all mm -hmm. that? See, I'm gonna take the pizza and kind of make it a foundation and then add a layer of mac and cheese. Look at all that cheesy goodness, wow. Mm-hmm, and finally, to top it off, a perfect scoop of ice cream. I call it my mac pizza cream. Wow, that looks amazing. Not bad, not bad at all. But sadly, it will fall far short of my spirit creation. Okay, well, what do you have? First of all, I love picnics. I love everything about them. For my first ingredient, I have the most perfect hot dog. Not just any hot dog. No, I'm talking about a big old hot dog with chili, cheese, mustard, and ketchup. That looks messy. The messier, the better. Next, I have a handful of potato chips. You kind of smell the greasy goodness, can't you? I'd rather not. Thanks, though. And finally, you top it off with a nice cold lemonade. Wait, you've just described a picnic. No, 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 you see, let's take all of these ingredients. Ain't that in the blender. Just get it all ready. <laughs> yeah. That smells awful. Well, if it smells awful, you just know you're doing it right. Then you pour the mixture into the mold, add sticks, let it freeze, and boom. Picnic popsicles. Picnic? Popsicles might be the worst creation ever. It's a better creation than your Mac pizza cream. You know what? Let's tell the kids the Bible story and then we can let them decide which of our creations is better. All right, good idea, good idea. In today's Bible story, you're going to hear about the ultimate creator, God, and how he made everything. Yup, I bet he didn't use blended up hot dogs though. <sighs> Why you ain't on my picnic popsicles, man? You know what, I'll be right back. I gotta put all this in the freezer. Hey everybody, thanks for worshiping with us and playing games and having fun. But we're gonna get into God's word and we're gonna open up into the big God story at the very, 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 very beginning. And so if you have your Bibles or if you have a Bible app, I want you to open up to the book of Genesis and open up to the very first chapter. So Genesis chapter one, and you can follow along with us today. Now. We're gonna be talking about how God is my creator. So everybody, I want you to say that again with me. God is my creator. Awesome. Now, sometimes there's some questions that people have about how the creation story really happened. And so there are some people that say, hey, you know what, when the Bible says a day, it really means just like a day like we think about. But there's other people that say a day doesn't actually mean like a one actual day. Some people think that a day means a really long period of time. And, and I wanna say it is okay to have a different opinion on how God created it. Because the thing is, is we need to know ultimately that God is our creator. And so if you believe that the earth is kind of on the younger side and maybe not super, super old, or if you're on the side that thinks that the earth is super old or you think that some other ways that God created everything happened, 
you know what? As long as you're believing that God is the creator, that's okay. And so we're going to talk about this. And when I say day, you might be thinking either a literal day or you might be thinking like a time period. And there's some other thoughts as well. But I want you to know that regardless, as you're trusting God and knowing him, you can learn and you can grow. And so open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter one. And so have you guys, and before I start reading, have you guys ever thought why in the world were you created? Why in the world were our parents created? Why were birds made? Why are there insects? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. But starting with chapter one, verse one and two says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was all over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I want you guys to think about this, like when it all began, there was nothing except God. And so God actually had the opportunity to create everything from scratch. Now, what I want you to do, because it was really, really, really dark. I want you to, I want you to pretend and imagine God creating everything by closing your eyes. So close your eyes, keep them shut. And I want you to think about like when in verse number two, when it says that the spirit of God hovered over the waters, that's the Holy Spirit and going all over everything. Could you imagine what that must have been like? Could you imagine how dark it was? But then when we read in verse three, starting there and tells us that then God spoke, that life began then. And so there was light. And so on day number one, God creates two types of things. He creates day and night, light and darkness. And that's what he did for day number one, just like that. It's done and it's good. Then he goes into day number two. And this is when God creates a, some separation called the sky and water. And so he brings out a separation between those. And so that means like our skies, like our space and everything. He creates all of that. But then he also gives us the water. Because did you know that our earth is actually filled with about 71% of water? So almost a large majority of our earth is actually covered in water, which is awesome and crazy. And so it was necessary that we had water to begin there. When God did that, that was day number two. He was done and he said it was good. Then day number three, he starts creating a ton and ton of things. From there, he begins to speak and that then land starts to form. And so where there once was water, now there were mountains, now there were beaches, now there were tropical areas, there were frozen areas, there were so many of these awesome things that were there and he created them. And then he also then creates plants, trees, vegetation, he creates fruit, he creates so many things that we needed so that we could have sustenance. So that's day number three. God says it's good and it's done. Then goes to day number four. And this one is a kicker and this is awesome. This is the day that God creates some special lights. He creates the sun, the moon, and the stars. The Bible tells us that there were the brighter and the lesser. And so meaning the sun, which was the brighter one, and the moon and the stars, which were the lesser ones. But let me tell you this. This was the first time that the sun and the moon and the stars were used. What do you guys think was what God used to bring light? I'm thinking that God actually used himself to bring light. See, in the at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, we actually see that there's this idea of a new heaven and new earth when everything is restored and made whole, that God would actually be the light for this whole entire new city and new world that we have. But 
he wanted to start it out that way. And then he created some really good things that go alongside that. And so when God did that, it was good. It was awesome. God was done once again. Then day number five, that's when you started seeing some of the animals, specifically all the fishes and all the birds. And there were so many to be able to be all around. And so you had things flying everywhere, going ga -ga! And then you had other things go blah, 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 blah. And it was so cool that God was able to create all these different species in just that time period. And once again, he said, done, and it's good. It moves on to day number six. This is when God begins to create all of the animals. And he creates giraffes. I want you to pretend to be a giraffe. So maybe try to stretch out your neck as much as possible. And he creates buffaloes. And so they go like, just go waddling along just like this. And so he creates all these different animals, large and small. Did you know that there are over a quintillion different insects on the earth? That's so many bugs. And God created every single one of them, even spiders, which I know are arachnids and which is a different species. But God created them on day number six and even the weird mosquitoes. I don't know why God created mosquitoes, but he created them out of good things. And so God creates those things. But on day number six, he's not done with just animals. See, God then creates something that went from just good and he was excited for it, to something that would become extraordinary. Very, very good. See, God created man. He created this dude named Adam, and he did it differently. See, all the times that God created, he used his mouth to speak. But with Adam, he, he went a different route. See, the Bible tells us that Adam was created out of the dust of the earth and so God through all the dirt the sand the gravel God creates this dude almost as if like it's a potter trying to make something with clay and he creates him but he's lifeless which is weird and it's crazy and that's the moment that something incredible happens see that's when God breathed life into Adam and so God filled up Adam's lungs. I want you to breathe with me. One, two, three. We're going to take a deep breath. <sighs> and that point, Adam just went from something that was like Plato to a, a real life human having the opportunity to speak, to think, to create with God. But God knew he wasn't done there. God knew that Adam needed somebody. And so he decided to create Eve. And so the Bible tells us that Adam was put to sleep. I want you to kind of think of it like as if you've ever had uh, a surgery before. Sometimes you have what's called that laughing gas. And so they put it over your face like a mask, like just like this. And then you're talking with them and they're asking you a couple questions. And then all of a sudden, as they're talking and you're breathing in the laughing gas, you go, <laughs> and that's how or that could be possibly how God made Adam go to sleep because he wanted to create Eve. And the Bible tells us that God used Eve or Adam's rib to create Eve. Now that's kind of weird. And you might be wondering why in the world did God use Adam's rib? And we're not entirely sure, but we know that God did it because he wanted it to show that they were both made in his image and that there was something that was beautiful and special and good. And so God creates Eve, this beautiful woman and Adam, and they are able to enjoy life together. And so they have an incredible time with one another and, and they got, more importantly, they got to commune with God. And so this is what God created on day number six. And just like for the animals, he said it was good. But for humans, he stopped and said, this is very good. And it's because he created something that was just like him. 
something that could think, something that could talk, something that could create and enjoy life with him. And so God had this awesome opportunity to be with him. And you know, sometimes we kind of wonder, what does God want to do in our lives? Sometimes we wonder, does God really want to know me? Does God really want to be my friend? Does God really want to hang out with me? Does he really even care about my life? Boys and girls, the beginning of the big God story right in here tells us that he cares for you. See, in the book of Matthew, it tells us that God knows the numbers of hairs on our head. Now, you know me. I don't really have a lot of hair on my head. So uh, I think God might know the number of beard hairs that I have. The Bible also tells us that God knows when we're happy and when we're sad and when we feel lonely and afraid and he's wanting to be there with us. See, God created us and knew that we would be made before the beginning of time. And he knows about our entire lives and he cares about every single detail of it. And so we can praise him and know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and to look and live like him just like he did with Adam and Eve now we're going to get into our faith verse and so I want you to stand up and I want you to do the motions with our faith verse video so I'll see you right after the Bible is God's word we can trust it from beginning to end Today's Bible verse is Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Are you ready to say it with me? I want you to repeat after me. Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Great job. Let's say it all together now. Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Great job, everyone. Hey kids, great job with doing the faith verse there. Um, we're gonna go into a time of response to him because we, when God speaks his word to us, we wanna move closer to Jesus. And here at Park Hill Church, we want to move closer to Jesus. And so today, we're gonna to take a little bit of time and we're gonna respond. And here's how I want you to respond today. In a few moments, there's gonna be one worship song that comes on. It's gonna be just a few minutes long during this time, I want you to think and pray and thank God for the different things that he has done in your life because he wants to know you. He wants to have friendship with you. He wants to be in relationship with you. And he wants to be there when you're sad. He wants to be there when you're lonely. He wants to be there when everything's going great. And so we're going to take some time and we're going to practice what's called thankfulness. And it's one way that we can pray. And so part of that is you might be singing along with the song. But part of it is you might sit back and you might begin to think about what God has done in your life. You might think about a really good moment in your life. Or you might think about some hard moments in your life and how God has been helping you through those things. And so we're going to just take a little bit of time and do that. And then after that, we're going to wrap up and we're going to check back in with Dash and Austin and see what's going to happen. But let's just take this few moments and let's let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Following Jesus is my great adventure. Following Jesus means Following Jesus means opposite. 
kids, thanks for uh, checking in with us today. Now, let's see what kind of creations Dash and Austin ended up making uh, for their food. So let's go do that. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Time to see which of us is the better food creator. Well, I already know I'm the better food creator, but since you made your food first, therefore you have to eat it first. Well, you know, I'd like to point out one thing. Your popsicles took forever to freeze. Now my back pizza cream got soggy. You're just making excuses, eat the pizza. This is disgusting. Swallow. You gotta swallow or it doesn't count. How is it? That was awful. Making a new creation is a lot harder than it sounds. Well, it's my turn now, and I know that you're about to get freezer burned by my picnic popsicles. <laughs> Yuck. Guessing it wasn't good? That was the worst thing I've ever tried. Who would have thought making something new was so complicated. You know, it's amazing that when God makes something, it's always good. Like he never makes a mistake. For real, God is the ultimate creator. As we saw in today's Bible story, God created everything around us. The sun, moon, stars, trees, mountains, birds, planets, oceans, anything you can think of, all by just speaking. I can't even make a simple food, yet God created the entire world perfectly, just like we needed it. You know, this week our challenge to you is to spend time thanking God for the things he's created. You can thank him for creating mountains, forests, your parents, your little brother, or even your family pet. The important thing is to remember that God is my creator. Okay, Austin, let's go throw this stuff away. You no, know, once you get past the horrible taste, the mech pizza cream's not that bad. That's disgusting. Anyway, we'll see y'all next time here at, at Challenge, Challenge Accepted. Accepted. Hey, thanks for joining our video today. We've had a lot of fun and uh, normally we're not gonna be making videos for this. However, uh, just because of everything going on, we wanna make certain that we can connect. Now, a part of that is we do wanna connect with you in a small group. And so if you follow the link uh, in our description for a Facebook Messenger chat room, you can be in a safe and secure spot uh, to where you can play some games, but then you can also ask and answer some questions about what we've been learning in the Big God story, and uh, and we can have a lot of fun. But before you do that, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you that you love these kids and that you have good for their lives. I pray that we would be moved by you, that we'd be changed by you, and want to follow you with everything that we have. We love you. Amen. All right. Hey, go to a messenger room uh, if you're watching this live, and if not, I hope you have a great day.